How's it going guys? It's Paul Myers, owner and lead therapist of Intentional Counseling. We're a group practice in Frisco, Texas. We specialize in mental health and I'm going to cover Illyrian therapy. So Illyrian therapy is a counseling theory or a theoretical orientation. Uh, if you're a therapist in training uh, or if you're just interested in psychology in general, uh, this is a big one that I think would be good for you to have a general overview of. I do use some of the techniques in this counseling theory, but um, it, is very, it is very old. It's been around a very long time. So Alfred Adler actually used to work with Freud, and, but he branched away from Freud around uh, 1911. And uh, he had his own theory of psychology and counseling where external sources or social influences were actually played a, a, a bigger role versus Freud who was more about the subconscious, okay? So we're going to cover the philosophy of the theory. We're going to cover some goals, some counseling goals in this theory for the client or the patient. And we're also going to cover some therapeutic techniques as well. There's a lot more that I'm not going to go over about the theory, but I'm just going to give you a quick overview, okay? So we've got the philosophy. Let's take a look. So like I said, um, Alfred Adler, he, he was saying that social influences were the most influential or factor for people, okay, for their, their personality development, okay, is what they called it. Um, and he was saying that it was both. It was, you know, environmentally, socially, but also psychological, which is more internal. Um, the big thing was he really had this theory that people were motivated socially. So, um, you know, relation, like external motivation based on relationships, status, you know, interpersonal dynamics, things like that. Okay. Uh, the, the concept of the inferiority complex actually came from him. So, um, he basically coined that term where we would overcompensate for some insecurities that we had and that really would manifest into our behavior a lot. And so, he uh, was big on that, that inferiority complex. The other thing is, there's this philosophy that people are just inherently, intrinsically capable for positive change, which this is one thing I definitely have adopted from him, uh, where I love this philosophy where people are capable of change um, and taking responsibility in their lives and, and creating positive change. Absolutely. Totally with that. Very helpful for people. Um, and he was focused more on conscious thinking rather than unconscious thinking like the psychoanalytic theory. So conscious thinking would be, you know, you can, you know, you're more aware of it. It's more thoughts that you're in control of. Okay. Okay. Goals of the theory. So one of the big goals in this is just better self-esteem. So uh, we, the theory focuses a lot on insecurity, self-esteem, feeling inferior, and then building and encouraging that positive self-esteem, which is great, very uh, beneficial with pretty much any kind of therapy. Um, another goal is to actually challenge the client. So they, they'll challenge the client's faulty thinking, they'll challenge their faulty logic, their misconceptions, or they call it misdirected goals that the client may have. Um, this type of therapy definitely challenges that, it kind of calls that out. It's very confrontational, that's one of the, the techniques, okay? So, but that's their goal, is to change faulty thinking, okay? Um, another thing is cultivating social interests, so just socially developing that person, building their relationships around them. The other thing is encouraging the client towards their meaningful goals. So, uh, the client actually come up with goals in therapy with the therapist in this style of counseling. It's like a mutually um, uh, respectful relationship where they establish goals together. But the goal is to create uh, meaningful ones to the client that, um, uh, and, and push them towards that, okay? Um, this theory shares a joint responsibility into the counseling relationship where the therapist is responsible for sure for the counseling, but the client is also responsible for the counseling as well. So that, that's huge, where joint shared responsibility for the client and the therapist, okay? Next is mutual 
trust and respect. That's just a pretty much a given uh, between the dynamic between the therapist and the client, which is obvious. Okay. And then the last thing, the counselor plays a teacher model educator role where they're um, trying to just, it's more of a didactic approach. They're really teaching their clients things, making their clients aware of things, uh, which I really like. Um, so very, very positive. Okay. So therapeutic techniques. So, so these are some things that the, the counselor would do or use or skills they would uh, incorporate into the therapy. So one is just collecting client history, which is relevant pretty much across the board in any medical field. Always a good thing. The more information we collect, the better. So there's no such thing as wrong information in therapy. The more data, the better the science. That's just always the case. So always a good thing. Second is the encouragement and push for that client to take personal responsibility, which I absolutely love. Hands down, probably one of my favorite aspects of this uh, counseling theory is that right there. We're really pushing the client to take personal responsibility for themselves, for their lives, for their actions, their behaviors, their thought processes, their emotions, their decisions, their perception of the world, their attitude. I mean, all of that that is technically our responsibility as individuals to manage. So this is wonderful philosophy, wonderful technique where we're really pushing for personal responsibility. Okay, like I mentioned earlier, confrontation and challenging the client's logic. So the therapist would basically, in a, in a gentle, loving, respectful way, be able to point out to that client that there maybe their way of thinking, or maybe they're rationalizing something away, or maybe their uh, their their logic or their goals are contradictory or not healthy. So a therapist in this setting definitely lets a client know when they're off base, right? Which I like, I like that confrontation in a session. I find most people appreciate it. Um, a few clients absolutely hate that, but the, for the people who do take personal responsibility, it, this that's very healthy for that uh, because they're receptive to it, okay? Then we've got the miracle question. This is definitely something I've used from this counseling theory a lot. It's very helpful. You basically ask the client if all of your problems were solved, what would your life look like? And um, it's like a miracle question, like what, what's, what's a perfect life look like to you? Or you know, once you accomplish all your goals, how would we know that your goals are accomplished? Or if you didn't have any problems, what, what, you know, what would that look like? So there's a lot of ways to ask that, but um, it's like the, the, you know, they call it the question, the main question, which helps the client share insight and identify some goals all at the same time. Very, very effective, it's very organic as well. So that's something I use a lot. Um, another therapy technique is revealing the purpose of the behavior. This is something I like a lot as well where you basically explain to a client maybe why they're doing what they're doing. Hey, why did you skip class on that Friday that you know you had a test, right? And you kind of reveal the reason behind that behavior. Hey, you know, maybe is it that you're so afraid of failing that if you just, you know, avoid it altogether, it, it makes you less anxious temporarily. That's like a coping thing for anxiety, right? Um, so that, that's one example, okay? We've got um, the next goal is uh, for, for this therapeutic technique is active goal setting. So they're actually uh, highly solution-focused therapeutic techniques here. So what we're doing is, hey, what are your long-term goals? What are your short-term goals? And exactly what can we do to make progress towards those, okay? Totally relevant. Um, very much a solution focused thing. How can we just make progress towards your goals? Another therapeutic technique is acting as if the problem is already solved. Like, hey, let's function under the philosophy as if the problem is already solved. Okay, so this is helpful because sometimes people tell themselves that, you know, I, I, I'll be happy whenever XYZ, but in, in, in this counseling technique, it basically gets people to have the mindset that they need to have now before anything changes in their life. So you're just changing your mindset before your circumstances change, okay? The use of paradox is also a very interesting therapeutic technique. This one's a little 
uh, on the iffy side, and you have to use it, uh, you know, sparingly, and you have to know your audience when you use this. But what you're doing is you're over exaggerating something negative. Um, and, and kind of acting it out and like dramatizing it and exaggerating it. Um, and then what happens is the, it kind of takes away the appeal of a, maybe a lesser version of something that the client's thinking or feeling or doing that's unhealthy, right? Um, you know, so for me, maybe, maybe there's some a fear that they have. I could um, essentially exaggerate that fear so much that it kind of shed some light on it and then they're less they're less fearful about it they can kind of see it for what it is like okay yeah you know it's not that bad right um so i've, I've seen I've, I've used some of that but it's very rare and it really depends on the client they have to be uh, uh very comfortable with you and uh that way they don't take personal offense to it so okay so hopefully that helps that's uh just very quick very fast that's not a lot of things about this theory but I just wanted to go over the main points. And uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. Subscribe if you haven't, that helps us grow. And if you haven't done counseling, definitely we recommend that. Go to intentional-counseling.com uh, to either book a session with myself or with one of our trained therapists at our practice in person if you live in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex or anywhere around there. Or even telehealth is fine too if you're located anywhere in Texas. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Take care.